Hello and welcome to our webinar, What's New with SharePoint 2016. I'm Brad Gleason, Vice President of Client Development here at fpweb.net. And of course, our co-host today is Eric Lowe. He's our manager of managed services. And thanks so much for joining us on uh, Valentine's Day. Glad to be here, Brad. Did you get my chocolates? I did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, it is Valentine's Day after all. So what we're going to cover today is minerals, the improved site collection creation and admin auditing, uh, SMTP configuration, increased file size limits in the mobile experience. Uh, we'll take some questions at the end of the webinar. And of course, as always, we'll give away that $50 gift certificate uh, for Amazon. So we'll be doing that here in just a minute. But of course, first we want to talk a little bit about SharePoint 2016. So what's the what's the biggest new feature in, in Mineral and, and why is that? Um, you know, Mineral is my actual favorite feature. Uh, with 2016, this is because it, it actually didn't exist in previous versions, and it makes my life very, very easy being someone that builds out SharePoint forms on the regular. Uh, so what it does is it allows you to build out these forms based on um, what role your SharePoint server will have. So in, in every SharePoint farm, you have multiple servers having designated roles. Minroll basically says uh, allows you to say this server is going to perform this function and just this function. Uh, there's numerous advantages to this. One, uh, one really doesn't have to look too far. Uh, in 2013, for example, if you wanted to do a distributed cache server, uh, you would designate the distributed cache server, and by default, that server is only going to use half of 10% of that server's RAM as the cache. Uh, for those of you there that are doing the math, that doesn't sound like very much, and it's because it's not very much. Uh, that's not very efficient. With Mineral, Mineral knows that I've, I've delegated this as a distributed cache server and a distributed cache server only. So it goes ahead and sets the new limit to be 80%, half of 80% of that server's RAM as a distributed cache server. As you can imagine, this is be much better performing. Uh, and, and it does it easily. It does it, uh, you don't have to think about it. Um, there's no chance for the server admin to accidentally miss it. Uh, again, they've, they've actually, since the feature pack has released, they've actually introduced shared roles now uh, to encompass kind of those smaller builds where you don't need such a robust farm as well. Okay, so here's a demonstration of Minroll in action from one of our SharePoint engineers. So here's my SharePoint farm. Let's take a look at servers in the farm. As you can see, the feature pack is installed and that's why I can use Mineral with only three servers. I initially started with two servers, Video Search and Video Web Front End. As you can see, these are using the shared server roles provided in the feature pack. I recently added the Video App Server and designated it as an application server. Let's add one more server to the farm. I'm going to add a server named Video App 2 and oddly enough, I will designate it as another app server. I've already installed the bits for SharePoint and the feature pack. So now all I have to do is run the configuration wizard and join it to the farm. Next. Yes. Connect to an existing server farm. Type in the database server alias. Use that database. Farm passphrase. Now here's where we select the role. The dedicated roles were introduced in SharePoint 2016 RTM. The shared roles are only available if the feature pack has been installed on the farm. So for this particular server, I'm going to click application. Everything looks good. Next. Wow, that was fast. All right, now that the server has been added to the farm, let's take a look at what it looks like. Let's go back to Central Admin. There's the old one. And here's what the new topology looks like. Here's the new Video App 2 server. Notice SharePoint already started the appropriate services on the server. 
Now, let's go ahead and provision the user profile service application and see what happens. Navigate to Manage Service Applications, New, User Profile Service Application, type in the name of the service app, select an app pool, leave all other defaults because this is just a test, all looks good, go, done, thank you again. So, now if we check out servers and farm, notice the user profile service has been started on all servers that have the application mineral. Nice, huh? Now that the farm has two dedicated application servers, there's no need to have a server share both the search and the application role. So let's change video search to the dedicated search role. To do that, central admin, system settings, convert server role in this farm. For the video search server, use the drop down and change the new role to search. Click apply, wait, done. No editing necessary. All right, let's take a look. Now, notice the search application is not compliant. It looks like SharePoint left the user profile service application and the incoming email running on the server. To fix this, just click the fix link. Yes, fix it. Thank you. It's fixed. Now, video search is only running the necessary components for search. As you can see, Mineral can drastically decrease time spent managing SharePoint topology. One thing to be aware of though is trying to convert server roles involving the distributed cache and search. Role conversion can not enable, disable, or reconfigure the distributed cache service. It must be done manually before converting to or from the distributed cache role. Additionally, Role conversion can't convert a search server to a role that doesn't host search if that server is part of the active search topology. You must manually remove the server from the search topology prior to performing a role conversion. Other than those two gotchas, Mineral seems to work as advertised and is a welcome feature to SharePoint. Let's talk about what makes site collections faster in SharePoint 2016. Uh, so there is a new feature, a uh, fast site collection creation feature, uh, that's a mouthful, and it's also extremely uh, descriptive of what it does. So this is a, a site collection procedure that uh, basically makes your turnaround to create a site collection much, much quicker. Uh, there is two commandlets that you have to run to prep for this. Primarily I see this being used in scripted and automated environments, uh, or just if you have a large amount of site collections you're going to create at once. Okay, so here's a demonstration of a fast site collection. First, let's take a look at the site collection list. As you can see, there's a site master defined. So now we're ready to create a new site collection using this site master to the SharePoint management shell. This uses the familiar new SP site, but notice the new parameter create from site master. We are telling it to use the template STSO. I previously defined as the site master. I'm going to let this run in real time so you can see how fast it is. There it goes. Done. Around one minute. A significant increase when compared to not using fast site creation. Let's refresh the site collection list. There's our new site. Now let's browse to it. Success. So Eric, tell us a little bit about admin auditing and how, how can you see this being used in SharePoint 2016? Uh, so this feature is something that's been requested uh, for many, many years and Microsoft's finally listened to us here. 
Uh, this is this is used to keep track of people like me, uh, your admins who are in there working. Um, I see this being used in, in a couple different scenarios. Um, compliance, of course, here's an audit log of uh, what your admins are doing. Uh, break fix, a huge one. Uh, something breaks, who did what? Of course, the popular answer is we, we haven't done anything. Nobody has. Um, exactly. And we all know that's never the case. Uh, so you can go back and see who's done what. Did someone turn on resource throttling? Did someone uh, change a threshold? Did someone put it in read only? Um, a third scenario is, of course, just being able to tell who's doing what, just through your internal auditing. Uh, what did Bomb do over the weekend? Uh, we, you know, this is something that we never knew before, <laughs> and we had to take people's word for it. So now you actually have a, a mechanism there to audit what your admins do, which is, speaks volumes for the, for the way SharePoint's moving. Right, so here's a demonstration of how it works. After you install Feature Pack 1, you will notice a new event trigger on the Usage and Health Data Collection screen. Administrative Actions. Conveniently, it's the first one in the list. After this event is enabled, admin actions will be recorded to the event log. There are several ways to view and filter the logs, but I'll just walk through a quick way that doesn't require additional software. First, open PowerShell. Now we want to add the SharePoint snapping. There we go. We are going to use the merge SP usage log commandlet and tell it to merge the data for the administrative actions usage provider. Unless you specify a start time, it will only show the last hour. This is just an example, so the past hour is sufficient. To make it easier to read the results, I'm going to save it to a text file. Click Enter and wait while SharePoint does its thing. When it's finished, open the new text file in Notepad. As you can see, each event provides a decent amount of detail. The server where the event occurred, the responsible user, the action, and some other details. On TechNet, you can find a list of administrative actions that are now logged. In my opinion, these are some notable ones. There's others worth checking out, but these are the ones I can see myself digging through logs to find. For most SharePoint admins, admin auditing is a long overdue and welcome feature. So, what are some of the security enhancements to 2016? Security, of course, being very top of mind these days. Yeah, so there, there's been a few improvements, and one of them, uh, it's a minor but significant change, in my, in my opinion, is to SMTP. So uh, a lot of times, Microsoft definitely wants you to use Exchange for your mail services, obviously. Uh, that's not always realistic. So uh, what would people in the past versions would have to do is create their own SMTP server. Uh, a lot of people already have internal SMTP servers. The problem is, is SharePoint didn't support security mechanisms for SMTP delivery. Uh, that's changed with 2016. So with 2016, you have uh, TLS encryption support. Uh, SharePoint now supports using a, a port other than 25. Uh, again, this will make it kind of a, a pain to troubleshoot, uh, but that's a pretty small price to pay for the improvements in security you're going to get. Uh, and not having to go, you know, through Exchange or go through a, uh, a separate uh, SMTP server just for SharePoint. So, how much did Microsoft increase the file size limits in SharePoint 2016? Uh, so, this is something that I think everybody wanted to happen sooner. Uh, I think there's reasons that it didn't that involve performance. Uh, the, the old cap has always been two gigs, and and that just doesn't go as far as it used to. Uh, two gigs is a pretty small file size limitation anymore, especially for a document management system. So now the new limit is 10 gigs. This 10 gigs, it does perform very well. Uh, so now you can actually have a real discussion over, do I want to keep this information in SharePoint or do we want to use remote blob storage? Uh, before, with any version before, you definitely are using remote blob storage and there is no discussion to be had. Uh, now SharePoint actually gives you another option. Excellent. So uh, another thing, a lot of emphasis has been placed on the mobile experience these days. So how is Microsoft's recent emphasis on the mobile experience reflected in SharePoint 2016? Uh, so as you mentioned, you know, Microsoft is 
very big in the mobile experience uh, moving forward. That's That's been their strategy. They've advertised it. Uh, nothing's changed really when it comes to SharePoint 2016. They're, they're continuing with that. Uh, they want to, as, as we've seen with every version, they've made small adjustments, small leaps forward with the mobile experience. Uh, but it's never been fully functional. Well, now they just, they went the full mile. They've created their own applications for the mobile experience specific to SharePoint. Um, these, are, these are available for iOS, they're available for Android, of course, Windows. Uh, and it's going to make your mobile experience almost like you're sitting at home at your laptop. It's 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 going to be great. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know that covers the big six improvements in SharePoint 2016: min roles, fast site collection, admin auditing, SMTP, file size increase, and the mobile experience. But we know that you know this feature is packed full of of different elements as well. You, you want to talk about a few of the other ones. So uh, some of them that caught my attention uh, were especially user improvements. And by that I mean improvements that your end users are going to appreciate. Uh, obviously it makes life easier for the admin. Um, the biggest one in my opinion is your resource-based URLs now retain links uh, when your documents are renamed uh, or moved in SharePoint. So SharePoint knows these links are out there. They know what they're linking to. So now Microsoft said instead of having you go manually update all these, which is very painstaking, making moving things in SharePoint rather tedious, I uh, will have SharePoint automatically update those links for you, which is amazing. Um, it now also supports using some special characters in your file names. I know admins hear that and cringe. Uh, most admins already know you don't want to use special characters in file names. However, like we said, this is more for your end user, uh, making your end user adaption a little bit easier. Um, longer file names now being supported is also uh, in that same genre, and that's uh, you would be surprised how often that actually came up in previous issues, but we've ran into that many, many times. Uh, and now you have longer file names that are supported, which is just more par for the course, right? Right. I would say, obviously, improvements for users means more efficiency and collaboration company-wide. Exactly. Anytime you can, you can really emphasize your end-user experience, you're going to increase user adaption. It's going to be easier for everyone to get on board with SharePoint. Uh, it's it's a win-win for everybody, and that's that's rare to ever get. Uh, some of the some of the other features, of course, improve navigation. Um, a big emphasis on hybrid configurations and improvements to those configurations. You have a new look and feel, which is is the same with every version. There's always a new look and feel. Uh, there's improvements to help meet compliance standards. Uh, there's been a big push towards compliance standards, such as information rights management, uh, which I think is going to be invaluable moving forward as so many people are moving to SharePoint. Uh, improvements to access and project integration. You have REFS support. Uh, I know that's pretty small niche, but it's there. Uh, you have a much more powerful and robust SharePoint search. Uh, of course, improved BI features as they do every year, uh, and, and much, much more. Excellent. So we have a very comprehensive side-by-side -side comparison of the SharePoint 2013 versions and the SharePoint 2016 versions on our website. Of course, you can find that at www.fpweb.net uh, slash forward slash SharePoint, along with more information about dedicated SharePoint hosting, absolute SharePoint support, SharePoint backup service, SharePoint training and tutorials. Uh, we also have SharePoint migrations, which we'll perform for free if you trust the SharePoint experts at fpweb.net to manage your SharePoint environment. You can always contact us at sales at fpweb.net or 866-780-4678 to discuss your unique circumstance. And of course, as we always do at the end of our webinar, we take a few questions. Uh, one of the questions that we have is, um, what about foundation? Uh, so everybody that in Microsoft did get some pushback on this when they first announced it. Foundation is not an option in SharePoint 2016. Uh, they've shown no indication of reversing that. Uh, so moving forward, you are going to have the licensed version of 2016. Uh, some of the positives of this uh, is that moving to the new versions now is going to be that much easier. You're not going to have to worry about different feature sets. Uh, so moving forward, you're going to have more of a uniform migration experience, uh, but it's still going to, to take the wind out of some people's sails that like that foundation version. Understood. 
So one of the other questions that we have this afternoon is, you know, about migrations, right? And how tricky is it to migrate from SharePoint 2016 from 20, you know, like 2007, let's say? So the 2003 and 2007 era, that's always built on a different platform. So any anytime you move from 2003 or 2007 to anything 2010 or later, uh, you're looking at a lot of risk factors. Uh, those are the hardest migrations. Not only the amount of jumps that you have in between should you want to do a content database detach and reattach method, um, but there's also you have your Fab 40 templates, you have a lot of gotchas that are going to get you when, you when you try to make that migration. Uh, again, there's, a, there's some third-party tools that will help so you don't have to do uh, the hop-to-hop -hop method. Um, it obviously requires more resources. I think that's one thing that gets overlooked a lot. Uh, when you move to SharePoint 2016, what's running SharePoint 2016 is going to require more resources out of the box than, say, 2007. Uh, so definitely you're looking at more resources. Uh, you're looking at uh, a very intensive migration. And, of course, knowing that SharePoint 2007 stops support in October, you want to get this done before that runs out. You can't wait two weeks ahead of time and expect it to be done? <laughs> the typical migration is going to take some time, so plan in advance. Okay. Um, another question that we have uh, surrounds SQL and what version of SQL Server should be used in doing these upgrades or migrations. So when it comes to SQL, SharePoint has always supported uh, basically the previous version of SQL on the latest patch and then the newest version of SQL. And that's still true today. However, what's not true today is something like uh, with, your, with your BI. So, if, for example, SSRS integrated mode. That's a very popular BI request. SharePoint and Microsoft no longer support SharePoint running on the old version of SQL in a kind of a hybrid scenario. Now, what you're going to have to have to be supported by Microsoft is if you want SSRS in integrated mode, you have to have SQL 2016 on your back end. Your reporting server also has to be 2016. Um, and that's, that's something that they've deviated from in the past where they would support kind of that hybrid or the old version. So I strongly recommend just going ahead and biting the bullet, going with SQL 2016, uh, as that's kind of the direction they've shown they want to go and that they're only going to support those really BI intensive features with the most powerful BI at their disposal, which is SQL 2016. Got it. Well, um, Eric, thank you so much for your knowledge today on this webinar, and we'd like to uh, make sure everybody understands that we're going to email a link to a recording of this webinar, webinar uh, along with the registration link for our next FP webinar, which will be about people as a service, and that will air at 1 p.m. Central on February the 28th. And at this point, we'd like to announce the winner of our $50 Amazon gift card. Now, as a matter of fact, and the winner is Bob Simpson. So, Bob, congratulations on, on winning that Amazon gift card. We'll get that to you. It's a very big hat, so we search for a lot of names in there. Again, thank you for uh, tuning into the webinar today. Hope to see you on our next webinar on the 28th. Thank you. Take care.